A panel can automatically retrieve information from the database by simply adding attributes to its display. However, knowing how Genexus determines which tables to access and how it runs through them is crucial for our application to work correctly. Next, we'll study how to determine the base tables of a panel object. As we saw before, a panel has a fixed part where the form controls that don't belong to a grid are located. Also, it has one or more variable parts, one for each grid found in the panel. To load the data in each part of the panel, Genexus will automatically generate a data provider for each part that will be in charge of obtaining the data from the database. As these data providers are independent, each one will have its own navigation, so each part of the panel, fixed or variable, will have its own base table that will be independent of the others. In the example, we see elements in the fixed part of the panel and a grid, so the base tables of the fixed part and the variable part will be determined separately. It may happen that the fixed part has a base table and the grid doesn't, that the grid has a base table and the fixed part doesn't, that both parts have a base table, or that neither part has a base table. Remember that here panels work differently than web panels. In a web panel, with a single grid, if there is a base table, the base table of the web panel is unique, and there aren't two separate base tables for the fixed part and the grid, as in the case of panels. Since in a panel object, the fixed part and the grid determine independent navigations, and each part will have its own base table, it's as if there were two parallel for each commands. To determine the base table of the fixed part, the attributes that belong to the fixed part of the form, the attributes that belong to the events associated with the fixed part will be taken into account, as long as these attributes are outside a for each command. These events are the refresh event and the events associated with buttons or controls of the fixed part, including those of the application bar. In addition, the attributes of the conditions tab of the panel object must also be taken into account to determine the base table of the fixed part. To determine the base table of the variable part, in this case of the grid, the attributes taken into account will be those included in the grid columns, both visible and hidden. The attributes referenced in the order, search, advanced search, and conditions of the grid, and the attributes belonging to the load event code as long as they are outside for each clauses and included in the events of buttons or controls within the grid. The attributes in the conditions tab will also be taken into account for determining the base table of all the grids included in the panel. Also, the grid will have a base table if its base TRN property was assigned with a base transaction. In this case, the attributes that are in the other parts must belong to the extended table of the table associated with the base transaction. In the example shown, the fixed part is composed only of two text blocks in the form and two tables as separators. In other words, there are no attributes. In addition, there are no attributes in the conditions tab of the panel. There is no refresh event, and there are no form control or button events in the application bar. So, the fixed part of this panel has no base table. If we analyze the variable part, we see that the grid columns contain the attributes attraction ID, attraction name, attraction photo, city name, and country name. There are no attributes in the order, search, conditions properties of the grid, and the value of the base TRN property is not assigned either. Also, there are no attributes in the load event, nor in events of controls inside the grid. To determine the base table, we must find all the extended tables that contain the attributes mentioned above. Note that the only one that contains all of them is the extended table of attraction, since it reaches the tables attraction, country city, country, and category, and the first three contain all the attributes we were looking for. Therefore, 
the variable part of the panel, composed by the grid, will have the attraction base table. This means that Genexus will build a data provider as a service in the backend, which will run through the attraction table and retrieve the data that the grid will load. Now, if we right click on the panel name and select view navigation, we see the panel navigation list. The level underscore detail node corresponding to the fixed part is empty, so we confirm that the fixed part has no base table. If we now select the node corresponding to grid 1, we see that the navigation list of the corresponding data provider says for each attraction. So the base table is indeed attraction as we had previously inferred. Below, we see that it accesses the attraction table to retrieve the attraction ID, attraction name, attraction photo, country ID, and city ID data. Then, with the obtained country ID, it accesses the country table to obtain the country name, and with country ID and city ID, it accesses the country city table to get the city name. In summary, we see that just because the grid has attributes, in this case in its columns, Genexus was able to automatically determine which tables to run through and create everything necessary to retrieve the required data from the database. Let's see another example of base table determination. The travel agency wants to have a panel that shows the attractions visited by a certain customer received by parameter. This information is modeled in the trip transaction, where each trip has a customer. Note that customer ID is a foreign key, and the attributes customer name, customer last name, and customer full name are inferred. And each trip also has many attractions that are visited represented by the second level of the trip transaction. The customer transaction containing the customer's data and the attraction transaction containing data on attractions are also shown. First, let's analyze the fixed part of the panel. In addition to the attributes included in the form, if we look for attributes in other parts of the panel, we see that the rules include only the customer identifier variable that receives the identifier of the customer to be displayed. And in the Conditions tab, we find a filter that ensures that only the data of the customer received by parameter will be displayed. We have nothing in the Events tab. This means that the only attributes to be analyzed for the fixed part are Customer ID, found in the form and in the Conditions tab, and Customer Name, that's found in the form. The base table is then Customer, as it contains both attributes. If we look at the navigation list of the level detail node corresponding to the fixed part, we see that the base table is customer, as we had determined before, and that this table is accessed to retrieve the data of the customer ID and customer name attributes. If we now analyze the base table of the variable part, we find the attributes attraction ID, attraction name, and attraction address as grid columns, and that there are no attributes in any of the grid properties. We may be tempted to say that the base table of the grid would be attraction, but let's not forget that the attributes of the conditions tab must also be considered, and there we find the customer ID attribute as part of a filter. Therefore, the attributes we find are attraction ID, attraction name, attraction address, customer ID, and customer name. If we analyze the table diagram, we see that the only extended table containing these attributes is the extended table of trip attraction, so the base table of the variable part of the panel will be trip attraction. In the navigation list of the level detail grid 1 node corresponding to the variable part, note that the base table is indeed trip attraction, and that is filtered by the customer ID value due to the condition included in the Conditions tab. We also see that the trip and attraction tables are accessed to retrieve data from the customer ID, attraction name, and attraction address attributes, respectively. We've mentioned before that the code found in the events is also taken into account for determining the base tables of the fixed part and variable part. Let's see in another video the events of a panel object.